Our next portion of study in rational functions is going to be working with rational expressions. So for starters, what is a rational expression? A rational expression for or when we get to rational equations in the form of f of x is anything that can be written as a ratio of two other polynomial functions. We'll call them p of x and q of x. Now with these polynomial functions, p of x and q of x, we're going to be talking about the degree of the polynomial and also the number of terms. When we go through and simplify these polynomial functions, because occasionally they will have items that, like any fraction, can be simplified away, we have to keep in mind that the domain of the simplified form must be equal to the domain of the original. So some examples of rational expressions would be like having x plus 1 divided by x minus 1. Now this is one that cannot be simplified. Or having x squared plus 3x plus 2, which is a quadratic trinomial, divided by x plus 3, which is a linear binomial. Sorry, 3. And last, uh, a last example, x squared minus x minus 6, which again is a quadratic trinomial, divided by x squared plus x minus 2, which is another quadratic trinomial. So as we go through and work in this lesson, we will find ways of simplifying and combining these. And this will continue into our next lesson, which will be arithmetic with these items. So let's get into the practice of simplifying some of these. We're going to simplify all three of these expressions following simple rules that we have from just simplifying normal fractions. We're going to factor and then find which factors, meaning multiples, occur in both numerator and denominator. So when you have a system like this, we start with the number part. What is 24 divided by a negative 6? Well, that is negative 4. Next are x's. According to this, we have x cubed in our numerator and x squared in our denominator, which means that we have more x's in, on top than on bottom, and how many more is 1. Now for our y's, we have y squared in the numerator and y cubed in the denominator. We have more y's on bottom, and that increased number again is 1. So the simplified form of 24x cubed y squared divided by negative 6x squared y cubed is the opposite of 4x over y. Now, let's move on to our next one. We have x squared plus 2x minus 8 over x squared minus 5x plus 6. To see if there's anything that can be simplified out of this, we need to factor both numerator and denominator. A word of warning, most people want to just say, oh, look, there's an x squared that occurs in both numerator and denominator. So can't we just get rid of those? And the answer is no. You cannot get rid of or simplify away things that are being added in both numerator and denominator. The only thing that can be factored away are items that are being multiplied in both parts. So if we were to go through and simplify this, x squared plus 2x minus 8 simplifies into x plus 4 times x minus 2. Now for our denominator, x squared minus 5x plus 6, well this is x minus 3 and x minus 2. Now, looking at this, what do we have in common both places? Well, both of them have this x minus 2 term. And since it's an item being multiplied in both locations, this will simplify to make a 1, leaving us in the end with x plus 3, sorry, x plus 4 divided by x minus 3. Now, when we go to put restrictions on this, we have to say 
x cannot equal 3 and x cannot equal 2. Even though the x minus 2 term factored away in both cases, our end result has to have the same domain as the original. For our first problem, we forgot to do that, so we have to say here that y cannot equal 0 and x cannot equal 0 because we had an x squared in our original denominator. Last one, 12 minus 4x divided by x squared minus 9. Well, I'm going to go through and begin by changing my order in the numerator. I have negative 4x plus 12 divided by x squared minus 9. This becomes negative 4 times x minus 3 divided by x plus 3, x minus 3. Well, I have a, an x minus 3 in both numerator and denominator, so I'm going to simplify that away to a value of 1, leaving me with negative 4 divided by x plus 3. Now for restrictions, x cannot be 3 and x cannot equal a negative 3. Anything else is a valid value for x. It just cannot have these ones because it would have made the original denominator 0. So as we move along, next we're going to see how we can multiply and a big part of multiplying fractions is being able to simplify like what we just did. So we're going to multiply 2x minus 8 divided by x squared minus 16 times x squared plus 5x plus 4 divided by x squared plus 8x plus 16. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to start by factoring all parts. So for our original first term and our original second term. So in my numerator here I can factor out a 2. So I have a 2 times x minus 4 divided by x plus 4, x minus 4. Now for my second one, my numerator is x plus 4, x plus 1 divided by x plus 4 times x plus 4. Now, what can be simplified in numerator and denominator? Well, in, in my first fraction, I have an x minus 4 in both locations. So, I am merely going to simplify that away. It becomes a value of 1. In my second fraction, I have an x plus 4 in both numerator and denominator. So, again, I'm going to simplify that away to a value of 1, which leaves the following restrictions, or the following simplified form. I will have 2 times x plus 1 divided by x plus 4, and I have two of those, so it's squared. Now, restrictions. From my original fractions, x cannot equal plus or minus 4. A positive 4 would have caused problems in this term that was factored away, and the negative 4 would cause all three of these others to have been zeros, so we would have been dividing by 0. Here is the finalized simplified form of this expression. Multiplying leads into being able to divide these. So with the division of a few different items on restrictions, we'll talk about it after we simplify this. So x squared plus 5x plus 4 divided by x squared plus x minus 12 is being divided by x squared minus 1 over x, uh, 2x squared minus 6x. When you divide these fractions, we're going to multiply by the reciprocal of the second item. So we're going to keep our first item the same, which will be x plus 4 
times x plus 1 divided by x plus 4 times x minus 3. And we're going to multiply this by the reciprocal of the second term here. So we get 2x times x minus 3 divided by x plus 1, x minus 1. Now, we can go through and find items that can be factored out, both numerator and denominator. In my first fraction, I have an x plus 4 in both locations. So, that will factor to a 1. Now, crossing over between items, I have an x minus 3 in the first denominator and an x minus 3 in the second numerator. So those will factor away. Keep looking. I have an x plus 1 in the first numerator and an x plus 1 in the second denominator. Those two will factor away. There's nothing else that can be taken. So our final is 2x divided by x minus 1. Now for our restrictions when we go through. Restrictions for variables of divisions on rational expressions are those that would have made either original denominator 0. So as we go through and look at our original denominators, what would have made each piece 0? Well, here, in this first one, it would have been anything that where x was a negative 4, or when x was 3. In this denominator, we're looking that x cannot equal 0, and x cannot equal 3, or the original second numerator, 0. So what would have made this portion 0 would have been x being 1, or x being negative 1. So that is the restriction list for this expression. So the simplified form, we have x cannot be positive or negative 1, x cannot be 0, x cannot be 3, and x cannot be negative 4. So that becomes the challenging part of this. Factoring and then simplifying away common terms, numerator and denominator, is basic math that's been being done with fractions since third or fourth grade. Now we're going through with the variables and finding things that we cannot do with them. So make sure you understand how to do this. Our next step in working with rational functions is being able to add and subtract, and then division of more complex fractions. So study this up and be ready to move forward.